so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam, every weekday from 3 pm to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> Tonight on FBC News, talks begin and direct flights between Fiji and China. The University of Fiji looks for a new vice-chancellor. And trade union elections to be slightly different from national polls. Good evening, I'm Amrita Priyadarshini. But first tonight, in a milestone achievement, Fiji will host the 10th round of PESA Plus negotiations next month in Nandi. Permanent Secretary for Trade Shaheen Ali says Fiji will have an opportunity to clearly articulate its position as well as recommend how the agreement can be improved for the benefit of all forum island countries. Maggie Boyle has more. Progressive trade organizations are the toast of the day. Permanent Secretary for Trade and key negotiator Shaheen Ali says Fiji is making gallant strides. Uh, Fiji is hosting the next uh, intersessional in Nendi. Um, so all the PESA parties are coming to Fiji to, ho uh, to uh, have this meeting. Um, this is the tenth round of negotiations that will be held. As you know, Fiji only joined uh, at the ninth round in Wellington. So the negotiations are progressing and at the same time, after joining the negotiations, Fiji has commenced its um, consultations with our stakeholders on the various aspects of the PESA Plus Agreement, various chapters that have been um, that have been progressed, uh, and the progress have uh, been substantial, and some of those chapters have been concluded. With a home advantage, Ali says the impending round of trade talks will set Fiji up to better inform PESA Plus parties, as well as strengthen a collective Pacific agenda. Uh, Fiji to uh, clearly articulate its positions on um, various aspects of the agreement like the investment chapter, the services chapter, as well as the goods chapter and some of the other chapters that have been discussed already like the um, technical barriers to trade and sanitary and phytosanitary measures. Um, biosecurity requirements. European Union-led economic partnership agreement, Ali says technical discussions are ongoing. But there is a stumbling block. Two important issues for the negotiations to progress. First is the fisheries issue, and the second is uh, PNG's participation in the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement negotiations. Both are important to be addressed and resolved before the negotiations can progress on other contentious and outstanding issues. The Pacific ACP trade ministers and trade officials meeting is expected to be held here next month alongside PESA Plus negotiations right here in Fiji. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The entire health sector, including hospitals, health centres and medical staff, should be subjected to appraisal processes. That's the view of Fiji Dental Association President Dr Vikar Singh who says the lack of scrutiny has left the medical sector in a dismal state. Rashika Kumar has the details. The medical sector has come under the microscope at a meeting between the Fiji Dental Association and the new health minister. Association President Dr. Vikash Singh says the constant public complaints must have a common underlying reason, which needs to be addressed. If people are not happy with the health care service delivery, there has to be a reason. You've got to find out who are the individuals, what are the organizations, why is it not working? And at the moment, we do not have any mechanism to do an appraisal and uh, try and see whether the organizations are working or not. He says the Fiji Medical Association and the Fiji College of General Practitioners have a similar belief. Dr. Singh says 
125A of the Medical and Dental Practitioner degree, which deals with complaints, has some shortfalls. The decree says that if I made a decision and if you are not happy, you are entitled to go and appeal to the minister. The minister shall consider your application, I mean, your appeal without consulting anybody, make a decision on that, and that decision shall not be subjected to any tribunal, court of law, appeals, or any other form of redress. And that amendment was passed just months before the election. Health Minister Johnny Osumate says a health forum is being organized next week. The idea is for you to give feedback on how well we are managing two things. One, the sector as a whole, and second, the government, the government part of that sector and also to give ideas on how we can move this forward, the sector as a whole and also the government portion. So that's Usamate has urged all health stakeholders to be a part of this forum. Rashika Kumar, FBC News. The increase in the number of visitors from China has led to talks on direct flights from either Shanghai or Beijing to Fiji. Akasita Tale spoke to Fiji's Consulate General to Shanghai, Naomi Lewini, who is leading discussions. Right now, Chinese tourists have to fly 90 minutes to South Korea before boarding a direct flight to Fiji. It is quite a, a long uh, flight because to get to Fiji, we have to go through Korea or Hong Kong. And the, the tourist uh, market here would rather travel directly from the mainland to Fiji. So there is uh, uh, talks on trying to get uh, direct flights from either here in Shanghai or Beijing. While talks are still at its early stages, there are yet confirmations of the dates and the times of the direct flights. We are at the very early stages, still having uh, discussions with uh, the uh, travel agents and the uh, airline uh, people here. And uh, of course, uh, in Fiji, uh, we have to uh, have a lot of uh, talks with uh, our airline people in Fiji and especially the uh, air services agreement with uh, the two countries. Introducing direct flights between the two countries will contribute immensely to Fiji's tourism industry. It's uh, the number of uh, people that will come that can uh, fill the, the flights. So that's why uh, marketing and uh, advertising will be very, very important so that we can uh, get the numbers to be able to uh, make it a uh, profitable exercise. With the new Shanghai Consulate General Office opened in August, Fiji is trying to establish good contacts in the business capital of China to ensure Fiji is marketed well. Millions of Chinese travel the world every year. Fiji just has to tap into the market. Akusita Tale, FBC News. University of Fiji Vice Chancellor Professor Richard Cole has resigned almost a year after his appointment. Professor Cole is heading to the University of the South Pacific as Deputy Vice Chancellor from January next year. Christopher Chan reports. The University of Fiji has not been able to confirm his departure, although the Vice Chancellor's position has been advertised. We approached Professor Cole for a comment this week. <laughs> he put me in a bit of a position there. Um, my, my position finishes the end of the year, uh, and at this stage I'm, I'm not sort of prepared to say where I'm going from, from here. Professor Cole joined the University of Fiji in January this year from the University of Waikato in New Zealand, where he was the pro vice chancellor. He was not able to tell FBC News why he was leaving but threw some light on the work he had done with the school. And when I first arrived, then we were, uh, had a bit of a backlog of staffing appointments, and so we managed to appoint, um, there's 55 new staff appointed this year. That's across the whole university that uh, support staff as well as academics, but about 30 academics, and so that's been a big, big shift, and that's something I'm very pleased to have left the university with a very good cohort of expert staff. It is believed the University of Fiji doesn't want Professor Cole to reveal where he is going just yet. But we've been able to get confirmation about his new role at the University of the South Pacific. Uni Fiji has lost another vice chancellor to USP. Applications for the VC's role closes on Monday. Christopher Chand, 
FBC News. Stay with us up ahead. Rural Women's Group show off their best in annual awards night. Nisamula <laughs> 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 Welcome back. This is FBC News. Now, with the release of the trade union election guidelines yesterday, the Fijian Elections Office has confirmed it will be slightly different from the September general elections. Akusita Tale tells us more. The release of the guidelines is an added responsibility for the Fijian Elections Office. Trade union elections will run on a first-past-the-post basis. Whoever gets the most votes wins. Uh, the union elections are mostly held like for all the northern northern members the election is held in Lambasa the western members is held in Lotoka and then they elect office bearers in those areas and then the office bearers who have been elected come to the central body and then they elect office bearers in the central body section 154 of the electoral decree states that FEO is responsible for the conduct of elections of all registered trade unions municipalities and such other elections however some unions have already advertised elections without the knowledge of the elections office. We understand that um, there are a couple of uh, trade unions that have, info uh, have advertised for elections. Uh, however, under section 154, they will have to comply with these requirements uh, before we proceed. Uh, the Fiji Sugar and General Workers Union have uh, written to us this morning to confirm that they have, will be withdrawing the notice about elections that they had published earlier to comply with section 154. If the conduct of the September polls is anything to go by, the trade union elections are bound to be transparent. We are um, making sure that some information is put out at every stage so that people with interest know. And uh, this is going to give members the opportunity to know, right, there's 500 members and 400 members voted. Um, it's not an information that is not public, it's information that is public. Around 79 unions are registered in Fiji. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Using a text platform on mobiles will be a new way of raising money for the Fiji Red Cross Society. The society starts its annual fundraising drive today and it will last for a week. Savara Tambua has more. The Fiji Red Cross has a number of programs that it runs throughout the year and it needs finances to keep them going. At this time of the year, the organization holds its annual fundraising drive. So if you don't see, um, if you don't see our volunteers, you may not have had a chance to drop some money into the cans. Uh, during the week, you can text in uh, your donations to Fiji Red Cross. And we are counting on the public, we are counting on the people of Fiji to support us so that we can continue our work. The society has 14 branches nationwide and has its own target which will benefit its people. And the funds that they raise uh, from our 14 branches, they will use that um, at their branch level to reach out to the vulnerable. So that, you know, uh, instead of um, national office staff being sent out from national office, the branches are able to mobilize quickly so that they can reach out to people. Funds collected will be used to support programs that are conducted during natural disasters as well as the Red Cross programs in the area of health and care, safety and youth, amongst others. Sabara Tambua, FBC News. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority is reminding the public, importers and customs agents to classify all imported goods correctly. The Court of Review this week upheld a decision by FERCA to demand $668,000 from a company which provided incorrect tariff classification to evade duties. The company incorrectly classified various goods, which resulted in short payment of duties in 2011. Following a tip-off, an investigation was carried out by customs. The company then filed an appeal on the grounds that the goods were cleared 12 months ago outside the recovery window period under Section 95 of the Customs Act. 
However, the court ruled that FERCA has authority to check records dating back five years and demand duties that has been short paid. A new telecenter has been opened at Nakasi High School in Nasinu by the Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama. The telecenter takes the total number to 26 around the country. Watisoni Rekandroka has more. Students were joined by their parents, teachers and other invited guests to the opening at their school. The new telecenter is an initiative of the Bainimarama government. So we are providing the infrastructure that's needed to make it happen, better roads, access to electricity and water, better school, better health clinics. About 20 computers have been given to the school, enabling students to access the internet. I stress that we were an inclusive government. So we will going to prioritize developments for those who need it. Bainimarama adds that his mission is to leave no one behind in this development. I am the Prime Minister of all Fijians, for all Fijians. I don't care who you are or what your background is. If you want to work hard to build our nation and give our children a better future, I am with you all the way. More than 200 people have already been accessing the computers at the telecenter in Nakasi. And there are hopes the number will rise after the official launch today. What is Sunir Rekandroka, FBC News. 50 women took top honors in the Rural Women Designer Awards in Suva last night. Three categories of design included Polynesian culture, Bollywood design and the Ito K design. Savara Tambua has more details. This is second time Mother Finau is competing in the Rural Designer Awards motivation to improve her skills. The important thing is to, to bring in the young people, the young uh, women to be part of this show so they can know where to stand in their future. Finau traveled to Suva from Tabiuni to show off her designs. She scooped the award in the Chamber competition in April. Other participants say the Rural Fashion Award has inspired them to use resources around them and become fully fledged designers. I am the include uh, Fijian accessories to um, uh, go with, uh, with the attire that we have designed. We should make use of this opportunity since most of us knows how to sew but do not use the talents. And the most important thing is for us to set an example of showing our children that sewing is one of our job as mothers. This year's awards were sponsored by LICI which is urging women to enter the professional arena in the fashion industry and support their families. We encourage the women in rural areas to come out with uh, different uh, products, different designs, which would help them to enhance their uh, capacity to uh, look at different markets and uh, go beyond uh, their own immediate uh, neighborhood and communities to sell. These contestants are part of women's groups that were given sewing machines by the government as a means of income generation. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Well, after the break, we look at race car owners who are set to burn the tracks tomorrow. And Super Cricket Competition, molding future national reps. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke hari problem ke dawa lekar mein a gai hu. No se bara baje tak aapki saheli renu. Choo, choo, choo. 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर 9 से 12 बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट वेलकम टू एफपीसी स्पोर्ट्स द वोडाफोन कोरामाल ड्रैग रेस इज बिल्डिंग अप टू बी द बेस्ट फॉर दिस ईयर टुमारोस रेस विल बी द थर्ड लास्ट रेस ऑफ दिस ईयर and organizers are expecting a big number of participants. Rohit Deo with the details. The quarter mile drag race is looked forward to by every car. The 
number of participants is gradually increasing from each year. We normally have 30, uh, 30 to 35 cars in the previous races, so uh, you know the, the number is gradually increasing. You know, in every race, this is the third um, last event for the year. We got um, two more to do after this, so it should be um, you know we should finish um, this year in a very exciting way. With eight different categories to compete in, the race has become a crowd puller. Organizers are warning other participants it will not be easy to cleanse the main title from the defending champion. Ravi Nath has been um, the cha champion for Fiji for the last eight years. I'm saying, you know, nobody has come close to Wachi Wachi. But we have to, Lawrence Sassem um, coming out uh, very strongly. You know, he, um, he was a surprise package the last race. So, you know, I feel that he would be able to make it in the nine seconds um, club uh, come Sunday. So it will be known tomorrow whether the speed match in the park and be raised once again. Someone else is more to judge the game. ABC Sports. The Suva Cricket Competition aims to produce more athletes for the national team. The second round of the tournament was held at the Elbert Park. Josephine Nabula has the details. Cricketers took to the pitch despite the poor Suva weather. Former national and current army coach Dayone Vakavaka says he is overwhelmed at the number of clubs at the tournament. We are happy to see more young and, and talented players coming up this season and uh, raising their hands to play for the Suva Cricket Comp so that they can be uh, one of the future Fiji cricket players as well. The enthusiasm of the players is encouraging but it might come to nothing if the weather doesn't improve. Pitch conditions are bound to affect each cricketer's performance. Uh, we are glad that uh, the weather is still on our side at the moment, even though it's raining today. But uh, we hope that the weather will be, will be good during the, through the season. In the long run, Fiji will need a proper cricket facilities if we are to produce national reps and excel at the sports. I think the main uh, focus that uh, Cricket Fiji we have to, they have to look at it is about the, the facilities uh, where the, the players have to train and prepare well for any international tournament. There are 12 teams battling it out in the weekly Super Cricket competition. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. 1,079 athletes have been registered for the 2014 Western FMF Chow Games. The event started with 690 athletes and increased to 930 last year. Meanwhile, the tournament has been shifted to Ba since the Churchill Park in Lotoka is undergoing renovation. The games were launched in Ba yesterday and will be held on the 14th and 15th of this month. The Fiji national basketball team will be in a tough outing in the upcoming Oceania Under-19 Championships. The pools have been finalized after the ranking of teams is based on the final placing of teams at the 2012 and 2010 Pacific Youth Basketball Championships. Fiji is pooled with last year's medalist New Zealand in both the men's and women's categories. Australia leads Pool A for both categories. The championship will be held from December 1st to 6th at Vodafone Arena in Suva. <laughs> rain was experienced over most parts of the country today. A trough of low pressure with associated cloud and rain lies east of Solomons and extends southeastwards over to Rituma to Fiji. Associated cloud and rain is expected to affect the group until later tomorrow. Lombasa was a hot 32 degrees today. Most other centers recorded temperatures in the high 20s as well. As for tomorrow, more rain over most of the group as the trough of low pressure continues to affect Fiji. Now the further outlook is for some showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, fine apart from brief showers. South to southwest winds 20 to 25 knots and rough seas. Now the main headlines again in a milestone achievement, Fiji will host Pacer Plus negotiations next month. Talks begin on direct flights between Fiji and China to cater for growing tourist arrivals to our shores. And University of Fiji looks for a new Vice-Chancellor as current VC is scooped up by the University of the South Pacific. And this week's poll question. Should Fijian rugby players put club before country? You can visit our FPC website to take part.
Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. That's it from the team. Until tomorrow, good night. Nisambula, <laughs> 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 <laughs>